Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 197. Wow, we're getting really close to number 200. Yeah. And we've got some fun stuff planned for 200. We're going to try and do something special. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. So today we're going to take a look at the 211 or 311, well I should say 211 and 311 tubes. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, last week we took a look at a miniature 9-pin twin triode TV tube. That's a mouthful. And that would be a good substitute for the 6N1P or the 6DJ8. And we got a comment on the video that basically was denigrating TV tubes. Now, just because a tube was originally designed for a different purpose does not mean it won't be good for amplifying the audio frequencies, which is actually a very, very narrow band. In fact, a number of tubes that are much loved in hi-fi these days, like the 300B, 6AS7G, 6080, 6DJ8. Can we name some more? Probably. Probably, yeah. Well, Probably. 6GU7. Yeah. Probably a couple of hundred. <laughs> These were all tubes that were originally built for a very different purpose. Could you imagine if there were cases of Western Electric 300Bs still sitting around just because people didn't consider it an audio tube? Well, Take that thought and now apply it to the many different tubes that we have yet to be discovered by mainstream builders. And you'll understand why we aren't afraid to go digging for hidden gems. And that leads us into today's tube, which is another tube whose designers never in a million years would have recommended it for home audio use. Well, what have you got to show us, Charles? Okay, well, let's take a look at the 211. Wait a second. That's not a 211. That's the 211. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a funny guy. Hang on, let me let me back the camera out. Yeah, we're going to need to for this guy. Now, isn't that fun? Look at the, the difference in these boxes here. <laughs> so what was in that box? So this is the 9-pin 12AX7 box. And this is the box for the 211. This is probably the largest GE box made in this style that I've ever seen. I just think it's so much fun. So let's take a look at what we've got inside here. So once they developed a logo and a, and a color scheme, they didn't care how big it was. They just kept on replicating. Yeah, and it has this beautiful old, very soft wrapping. Let's take that off here very carefully. And here's what we have inside. This is a 211. And it is a beast of a tube. Just take a look at this guy right here. And what the 211 originally was designed for was uh, radio. Uh, it was a, it's an amplifying triode with a combined cathode and heater. So it's a directly heated triode, they're called. And this was designed for amplifying radio frequencies and also audio frequencies, but definitely not in the home. So this tube is now getting repurposed these days in home hi-fi amplifiers because you can get around 10 to 20 watts out of a single one of these single-ended. And there are some amps that are designed to take them. Let's take a quick look at another very similar tube before we get into the data sheet. Oh, this looks almost like I just swapped the tube off camera and brought it right back in, right? Well, this one is actually a little bit different. What we have here is a 311 CT. That uh, CT is actually pretty important. What this the 311 is, is a 211, the same tube that we just saw, but made by United Electronics Company and made uh, so that it had higher power output, roughly about 25% more. And these are incredibly rare. GE made most of the 211s. We were just looking at a GE example. And United Electronics only made the 311 CT. So there aren't that many of them around and they're really interesting to find. We actually did manage to find some. Did you manage to make a 
a pair of those? We've up? got a pair, and we've got a pair in the store. He spoiled it. <laughs> but look how well built these things are. So they're very similar to the 211s. We've got these gigantic ceramic spacers on the top and bottom, and these huge graphite plates. And we're going to lamp one of these in a little bit after we take a look at the data sheet and just see how beautifully they glow. All right. No, this wasn't all um, chocolates and bonbons. We had a huge pile of 211s and 311s that I've accumulated over the years and I've been threatening to test for, <laughs> for years, literally. Yep. And uh, you've been cleaning up and making, and found making the big discoveries. Pile of them. Yep. And you said, well, we should test these. So just a few days ago, uh, you set an operating point and we had already actually built a custom section onto our power tube tester matcher. Yeah, wait till you see the socket these things need. Yeah, and um, so we tested them up, but we had we lost about, what, half of them? Yeah, probably, but they were fairly obviously gone already with, with poor gathering on them. And we had one that I think was running away on us right away, so we, we cut that off. I mean, years ago, when I was buying them used, uh, pretty much every seller I was buying from said, I don't know how to test it. I don't have a <laughs> tester. I don't have a socket. You know, you're, it's buyer beware. Well, there's very few testers that can actually test these natively. I mean, we've got a custom made power tube tester here just for doing things like this. And, and a power supply that can go up to a kilovolt. Yeah, so. and it still took some head scratching to figure out that we were doing it right. Anyways, what have you got? All right, well, I've got the data sheet here from RCA for the 211. Now, GE was the actual inventor of it, but RCA has some nice data sheets. And we're going to just quickly skip over all this stuff down here. We're just going to compare the max voltage that you can have on the plate and the maximum current. So if I flip the page and we take a look at the top here, we can get 175 milliamps max plate current. And with two tubes operating in class AB, we can get 260 watts output. So this is for the 211, keep that in mind. Now for the 311, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will realize this is not a 311 data sheet. This is actually an 8003 data sheet. And what this is, is actually RCA's version of the 311 CT, but it had a top cap instead. The specs should otherwise be very close, but unfortunately I could not find a United Electronics data sheet. No matter how hard I looked, usually I can find them eventually, but if anybody has one out there, feel free to upload it and post a link. So we've got higher plate voltage. A little bit more, another 100 volts. And that may even be just due to the fact that this tube has a top cap on there, so it has better isolation. It may actually not be that much different for the 311 CT. But we've got way higher plate current of 250 milliamps. What was the uh, the 211's plate it current maximum? was 175. Oh, so a huge difference. And as a result, we see a, a huge difference in the maximum power output. We went from 260 watts to 460 watts no, for that's, two tubes. That's running in class AB. Of course. Which is probably how the tube was originally designed. Um, but almost everybody who's running these at home is running them in pure class A. Well, yeah. Hopefully pure class A, but in class A almost certainly. Mm-hmm. So the output would be a lot, lot less in Class A. Class A yeah. is the, as far as I know, is the least efficient way to amplify an, an audio signal. <laughs> yeah, although these tubes can actually go into Class A too as well. And you can get roughly about 50% uh, more power, I think, out of them if you now, run them there. What's Class A too? That's where you go grid positive. And it's a tricky thing to design a circuit around it correctly. It can add distortion if it's not done correctly as well. And uh, But you get more power out of uh, a single-ended uh, topology. Okay, so we're going to clear the deck here, and we're going to bring in one of the 211s here and lamp it for you on screen. We'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the uh, 311 mounted in a refurbished socket. I actually have a whole bunch of these in the store. They were made by a company called EF Johnson Company in the U.S. And they come, this is actually not a Johnson, but it's a very similar socket. They came in as salvage, looking very much like this. And I completely take them apart, I refurbish them. But what's not well understood with uh, any of these sockets, whether they're brand new in the box or refurbished, is that you gotta get these contacts that the, uh, the stubby little pins lock into. You've gotta clean them thoroughly, of course, 
but you have to line them up. All four have to land properly. Otherwise, you can end up, especially when you're running high voltage on these tubes, and you will, mm -hmm. you can end up with arcing. And, and you end up with something like this happening. Yeah, you can see that. And we actually cleaned some of that off in an attempt to see if the tube would test. And it doesn't, of course. But it does still lamp. It does still lamp. So whenever you're working with higher voltages, caution everyone, <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got to pay even more attention than you normally do. Um, so wire insulation is very important. Separation of components is important. Contact is very, very important. So if you have something that's got a mechanical contact, it has to be absolutely locked on solidly. It can't be sort of basically almost connected because that creates a potential for an arc and a lot of damage and potentially a fire. So be really careful, folks. Okay, well, let's turn off the lights. And Studio lights going off and let's lamp it. Now, these are fun tubes because they've got two filaments that are done sort of like in an inverted V like this. You kinda, can sort of see it. Kind of looks like a little uh, induction oven in there with those filaments. Wow. And they run on 10 volts. And do you remember the current draw? Three and a quarter amps. Right, <laughs> which is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but for a two filament, it's huge. And it's in a weird area for power supplies. We can't use our low voltage DC bench supply because it doesn't have enough current. We can't use our high voltage supply. Um, actually, we probably could. Uh, I think it, it, it doesn't, I mean, it's designed to handle 100 to... 100 volts to a, a thousand volts it, it will i think drop down to somewhere in around a, the teens but it's not really designed to do that yeah so we've got this thing hooked up directly to a variac and we've got it turned right down to 10 volts ac right now yeah so that works just fine there's there's all kinds of different ways to to do this anyways these things lamp beautifully and they get hot so this if you're running or thinking of running a 211 as a uh, as a wonderful class A uh, monoblock in your system. Be prepared. These tubes are very expensive. There's a modern um, copies of these that are out there. Most people who are into these tubes will want the vintage tube. Uh, it's the same pretty much across the board. The, the vintage tubes just are superior. Um, and, um, and these are what I would call tubes for a winter amp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a space heater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, which works fine if you've got a if you're in a colder climate and you run your amps in the evening like we do to listen to music um and you know, it just supplants the heating plant. So, yeah, yeah it works out just fine. Okay, so after spending half a day and testing dozens of 211s and 311s, how many uh, pairs did you, did you actually end up with, Charles? Well, we ended up with a matched pair of 211s, uh, one of them used, one of them new old stock. That's GE, right? That, that are both GE made, and we ended up with a matched pair and a matched spare for the pair of the 311s made by United Electronics. Right. And um, I'm amazed that we, we got those out of them, but they tested nice and tight and above new old stock, if you if you believe it. Now, the 311, that's a direct replacement for the 211. Yes, it, it is higher spec and higher rated, but all the documentation I found online said that you can swap it in. Okay, excellent. Okay, well, thanks for doing that, Charles. Okay, so before we get into the what came in category of the video, um, just a little bit more of a tidbit about the 211s. They're also known as the VT4C. And what does VT mean? Well, it's vacuum tube, but it also was a military designation code. And they were sequential. So this is VT4, meaning it was a fourth code and there wasn't a third one. So this was the third tube ever to get a VT designation code telling you just how old they are. Okay, that's totally neat. Okay, now into what came in, we have some beautiful military box tubes. These are late military boxes. You can tell because they use plain white boxes and they put these sticker labels on them. And the barcode had been invented. And the barcode had been invented. It's not something you see on an older box. And we've got a late date on them, right? 
This yeah. is September 1987. 1987. So that's very late production. Although it is possible that these tubes were produced earlier and then boxed later with these dates on here. That happened quite a bit, especially near the end of the second tube era. And what do we have in here? Well, we have a 6CA7, also known as the EL34. And on the label here, we'll be able to see made in Germany. So that tells us right away, it's almost certainly an RFT. And we can look at the signs such as dimples around the pin base and on the top. We actually just got these in right before we shot this video, so we haven't cleaned these up, we haven't tested them yet. But, but we, we found, what, four or five sleeves? Four of or five sleeves of new, new stock, stock, new in the box. EL34s, and one uh, of the nicest New in the ones. sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, that's something to celebrate. And the RFT EL34, is a fabulous sounding vintage uh, power tube. And the best news is that it hasn't been discovered. Yep. And uh, I think we were one of the first people, I mean, uh, hobbyists in in Europe, I think have been using RFTs. Well, they've known about it the whole time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but over in, the, in uh, North America, it's not a tube that's well known and, um, and it, it really deserves more respect. Um, but anyways, we, we have enough of the RFTs in stock that when we hit episode 200, here's a heads up to only our viewers. Yep. Uh, we're going to do some flash sales. Uh, we're going to try to find the best tubes that we've got good inventory of, uh, in the major tube categories. So, so these are all going to be tubes that everybody wants yep. and not everybody can afford. And we're almost certainly going to do uh, these new old stock RFTs. The sale is going to be, it's just going to run for a week. It'll come out on episode 200, which is, I think, three weeks from now. Uh, two or three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. We're on 197, so in three weeks. Yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We got a fun episode planned. And that reminds me. Uh, if you have uh, some questions that you've always wanted to ans ask Charles or Jim um, uh, about anything to do with tubes or even the business, that's fine, or the kit business, that's fine as well. Um, go ahead and start plugging them into the comments because we'll, we'll do a little uh, Q&A on episode 200. Uh, we're probably going to do a little reminiscing because, I mean, 200 episodes, that is over four years of episodes yeah um and in that time a lot has changed in the tube business and our business we've got you know an exciting announcement to make as well because we started a new business <laughs> yeah well we might show off some uh, some of the stuff that we've been working on yeah so anyways okay you've got some more tubes to show us yeah, what, what else have you clear got the deck here carefully yeah we have a saying in the labs no, no droppy, droppy. <laughs> Okay, now these are quite a bit smaller than the other tubes that we've been looking at here. And these are some more of our favorite 6CG7s, which of course are the 9-pin version of a 6SN7 tube. And these are both Japanese-made versions. We have the NEC right here. And you can see a little bit of a label left on here. And NEC is actually a really interesting company because they were originally set up by Western Electric, believe it or not, in Japan to help with their power grid. And what does NEC stand for? Uh, Nippon Electric Company. And Nippon is just Japan, yeah. right? So the Japan Electric Company. Yeah, so we've got some of them in and we've gotten in some Matsushita. And just like with NEC, Matsushita's tube production was set up by Mullard. A lot of their tooling came from Mullard originally. And so these are two very nice Japanese 6CG7 tubes and we've been able to find enough of them to make some match pairs that are now in the store. So we're hoping you're going to enjoy them. Now be careful, There's even though there, there are some really fine examples of tubes that were made on um, on Mullard and Phillips machinery. Um, Phillips was actually uh, a, a one-third owner of Mat Matsushita uh, going way back to 1952 I think, 54, something like that. Um, it's not a universal endorsement for all tubes made in Japan. In fact, we see a lot of sellers online who are taking every tube ever made in Japan and equating it to a Mullard or a Phillips tube. Watch out for sellers that do things like that. Um, 
We basically try to get behind tubes that are good, solid tubes. So they're, they test well, they are well built. They sound great. They sound great. Yeah. Um, and we'll endorse a tube like that. Whether it's made in uh, the United States, Canada, uh, somewhere in Europe, the or, former Soviet Union, or in Japan. Yeah. Uh, but this um, this business of blanket uh, uh, saying, "Oh, it's an EL84 or it's an EL34, and it was made on uh, you know Matsushita equipment," and that makes it basically a mullard. Watch out for those kinds of sellers because a lot of that. Um, is is just not true. <laughs> I mean, some some of it might be true in the fact that the tube was made on uh, on mothered uh, uh, supplied equipment, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a great sounding tube. So we we take tubes one tube type and one manufacturer at a time, and so should you. It, just be careful as we start to head to essentially zero inventory for a lot of high value vintage tubes, sellers are getting more and more creative in how they advertise what is, you know, something desirable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, these tubes just need a simple little adapter and... It'll work as a 6SN7. Yeah. So be careful also of the adapters. Um, uh, there's, there's a couple of different ways to wire this socket and uh, you have to make sure you have a, an adapter that was specifically designed to take this tube and move it over to an octal. Yeah, the other major one is for converting a 12AU7 over and that will not work with yeah. these tubes. Yeah, so just be careful. We stocked the correct adapters, but there, there, there are a number of sellers out there that will have the right adapter for you. Okay, well, if you stayed this long, here's some discount codes to help you out. We can reach almost everybody around the world with flat rate shipping of $20, but if you're in a difficult to ship region, an island nation um, or way in the corner of the world somewhere, and you know that you have a difficult region to ship to, make sure you contact us before you order because we're probably going to want you to use a reshipper um, or we'll have to make some special um, consideration for shipping. Or we might not even be able to get to you, but we can get to... What, about 99.9% .9 of the people in the world, Charles? Yeah. Maybe even more. <laughs> and if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. And of course, there's a bunch of discounts and people are still figuring out the discount code that eh, it's pretty easy to figure out. <laughs> it's costing us big money, but I like to see uh, viewers and returning customers grab discounts. So grab your, grab your cheers code. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.